Hello, today we'll be discussing the article, Digital Sexism, Why Are Virtual Assistants All Women? Written by Ramona Pringle. This uh, project will be presented by Jacob, who will be doing the introduction and conclusion. I'm Gary, I will doing functionalist sociology. I'm Shen, I will discuss about the conflict theory. I'm Natalia Liu, doing analysis from symbolic interactionism perspective. I'm Chandra, I'll be talking about the positive critical assessment. And I'm Megan, and I will be talking about the negative critical assessment. Virtual assistants are artificial intelligence programs to, use to assist users with day-to-day -day tasks performed on technological devices. They are usually able to update schedules, send or reply to emails, and a bunch of other small tasks. All of these features are done at the command of the user, and this article focuses on the prevailing use of female avatars to represent their software. As developers aim to attract users, they attach human elements like names, voices, and genders to their um, programs. Although many offer male settings as alternatives, the article claims that the reason behind female being the default option is research, which showed that people take orders better from women and that people have shown a preference for female voices in automated systems. The author, the author also introduces Clifford Nass, who argued that male voices are perceived as being more authoritative, whereas female voices are understood to be more helpful and supportive. These characteristics, of course, match the traditional stereotyping of both gender roles. Gender in this context refers to the social construct created by stereotypical definitions perceived normal behaviors and expectations of the male and female roles in society. This would be specific to modern westernized society. Traditional gender stereotypes for males are aggressive, competitive, independent, smart, whereas females are traditionally thought of as being nurturing, supportive, dependent, and emotional. These characteristics will continue to be prevalent for the foreseeable future, but as we have begun to move forward closing the gender gap of the society, these roles too have begun to converge slowly in modern culture. The reason in which the author believes this to be an issue is that 60% of early users are male, affluent, and middle-aged, and their preferences will continue to shape how these tools are developed as they move into a more prominent position in our society. The author sees this as a step back towards reinforcing the more traditional roles of women in Western society and as a movement away from closing the gender gap. This article claims that the market for virtual assistants currently reinforces a power dynamic which must not be overlooked, that virtual assistants are designed to be subservient and by making the default option female, the creators are sending a clear message regarding the stereotype nature of females. This is to say, as we steadily move toward being more integrated with these virtual agents and other humanized technologies, we must also be wary of how design decisions could very quickly reinforce social stereotypes that are not appropriate or desirable in the context of the current social standard. Structure functionalist posit that general rates from the need to establish a division of the labor that will help maintain the small surrounding of the family and contribute to the stability of the society. A devout believer in functionalist theory would agree that the gender, physical, and the behavior character that are built into the digital product reflect the social view of the gender and the sexualist because they come directly from their designer who are member of the society. Gender role in this view arises from the need of, uh, to establish the division of the labor within the family because of their biology role in childbirth. Women have the primary responsibility for child care. Similarly, men have the responsibility for hunting and physical work because of the relatively great size and the strength. However, latest estimate from the Officer for National Statistics show that in 2004, there appropriate 31 million people working in the UK, of which around half was women. The number of the women working in the firms is growth. In this way, a functional theory would disagree with the viewpoint of the article that male and female should play the same roles in designing the digital world. Discussing about the conflict theory, in the conflict theory's point of view, conflict, not harmony, is the salted nature state and that revolutions and radical upheavals, not graduate development, fuel social change and improvement. The conflict theory claims that women are exploited by men. On one side, women are expected to find easy jobs so that they can have a lot of time spending on doing housework, taking care of children and cooking dinners for family members. In most people's point of view, if a man who spends a lot of time on working and earning a lot of money, he is a capable, successful, and responsible person. However, if a woman works so hard that she sacrifices her family, she will be judged as a failure. On the other side, boys are preferred in many societies. When women get married, they do not belong to their original families. 
men can inherit the family treasures and marry women to take care of their old parents. Therefore, having a son is very important in a patriarchal society. And according to the author's argument, most users of Amazon virtual assistant are male, affluent, and middle-aged. The reason she can figure out is that most men think women should be subservient. They want women to be their servant and help them to do many things they do not want to do. Although our society has developed greatly, women are still being exploited by men, not only in the real world, but also in the virtual world. In this way, a conflict theorist may agree with the author about digital sexism. However, conflict theorists generally admit to some degree of consensus and cooperation, otherwise society will fall apart. From this point of view, they may disagree with the author. Some people think that female voice sounds more acceptable than male voice, including most women. Hence, they do not want to exploit women. They just make their choice following their personal preferences. Symbolic interactionism theory claims that meaning of things is not contained in the individuals or in objects, but it is derived from social interaction. According to Herbert Blumer, people do not respond directly to the world around them, but to the meaning they bring to each. And because the meaning is subject to people's interpretive processes, meaning is changeable. Symbolic interactionism regards gender roles as symbolic categories that people use to create and maintain socially accepted behavioral expectations towards each other. In our case, the symbolic communication takes place each time when consumers use the services of digital assistants. They obtain a commonly shared meaning and experience about the product. So we can say that the voice assistants as product have their own symbolic meaning. Symbolic interaction theorists would agree that the production of female versions of voice control assistants has the tendency to shape people's biases towards specific gender role differences and job designations. The virtual assistant devices with primary female sounding names and voices might be interpreted by consumers as a pervasive message of symbolic reinforcement of gender roles through technology. Furthermore, according to the concept of the looking glass self effect introduced by Charles Cooley, individuals see themselves as they think others see them. In this context, the symbolic interaction theorists would conclude that the image enhancement of dutiful and obedient female digital attendants may have a detrimental impact on women's self-image. That is to say, the consistent production of, fem of only female digital assistants risks of developing stereotypical behavioral mode in women, as well as creating more psychological constraints in terms of occupational roles. In today's society, we frequently witness the fight for equality within the workplace. A study conducted in January 2017 shows that 7 in 10 Canadians agree there is still gender inequality in terms of social, political, and economic rights. This statistic proves that the author's standpoint is valid when regarding the power dynamic of the male-dominated view that is continuing the gender gap for our future society. The majority of influence that is shaping the digital era of these virtual assistants has been recorded to be male. Virtual assistants were created to take on traditional subservient tasks such as setting timers for when the dinner is ready, reordering home supplies, and even dimming the home lights at night. Simple tasks that were designed to act as the customary motherly role in which female characteristics have been attributed to long before the fight for equality had begun. The creators of the virtual assistants have depended their conceptions on outdated gender norms that are progressively changing within today's society. If these world-known companies do not modify the future technology to incorporate the changing views, it could force the ongoing fight for equality two steps back rather than a possibility to allowing this technology to be a leap forward. From another point of view, we must consider some reasons why virtual assistants are typically female. From a marketing perspective, a female voice is considered more identifiable and all-encompassing with male and female audiences. Studies have shown that a female voice is linked with being more persuasive, convincing, and helpful while a male voice is heard as being harsher and less trustworthy. Furthermore, one can also argue that gender can be taken completely out of the equation. Virtual assistants are not human, therefore there is no need to associate a gender with this form of help. Modern society has brought change to traditional gender roles, meaning that a woman and a man are entering equal grounds in the labor force. As of 2014, Statistics Canada found that almost half of the female population makes up the entire Canadian workforce. All industries and work roles are important to society. The author is perpetuating the outdated gender norms that she states need to be changed. It is vital that we realize that everyone plays a role in society.
In conclusion, we have found that gender inequality remains to be something we must be aware of. Thank you for listening.